Zoe sat on the window sill, contemplating how complicated life is. Her high school graduation was approaching, and she had no idea what to do next. Zoe wished to pursue a career, but her stern, always unhappy father was unlikely to allow her to travel to the city to study. She wanted to be independent and get out of poverty more than anything else. And Zoe longed for her mommy. She died when the daughter was 15 years old, and she has lived with her father ever since. Zoe had known since childhood that he didn't love her, but she didn't understand why. The girl was the family's sole child. She grew up as a humble and modest girl who never showed anyone her tears. Zoe achieved straight A's in school because her mother was likewise stern and demanding. The girl's education was simple, but she had no friends. Her peers frequently made fun of her because her parents rarely bought her new things. She tried to talk about it with her mother and father a couple of times, but they merely unwillingly waved her off. Zoe missed her mother terribly after she died, for despite her severe personality, her mother adored her. Hearing heavy footsteps, Zoe stepped down from the windowsill, wiping away her tears, a split second before her father appeared on the room's threshold. What are you doing sitting there? Her father cursed her. Is it necessary for me to accomplish anything around the house by myself? Now, daddy, said Zoe as she leapt from the couch. Her father frowned at Zoe and added quietly that Eva was coming to visit them tonight, and not just for a visit. But staying here made Zoe practically suffocate with rage. She lamented the fact that it had just been two years since her mother's death, and her father was preparing to remarry. Eva worked as a saleswoman at a nearby store, and despite her good looks, she had an incredibly unpleasant temper. You're not going to like her, daddy. I did not solicit your opinion. Go take care of the house and make sure everything is clean and supper is ready. The father walked out, slamming the door shut. Zoe wiped away her tears again, thinking about what life would be like next to her stepmother, and sighed loudly as she went about her daily activities. Zoe's life got terrible with a stepmother. When her father scolded her again because of complaints from his new wife, Zoe couldn't take it any longer and asked, Daddy, why do you hate me so much? I've bothered you my entire life, and I'm not sure why. Her father gave her a harsh look and said something that made her pale, then blush. And the next thing she knew, she was rushing to gather her belongings, and an hour later, she was standing at the bus station, leaving her home forever. Three years have gone by. Zoe came to the city, obtained a job as a cleaner at a huge corporation, and settled into a rented room with Mrs. Turner, a humble, clever elderly woman. She never saw or spoke with her father again. She was certain he didn't require it. Zoe never made any friends or found a lover over the years. She didn't want to have any fun, but she liked her tranquil existence and never complained. The girl's solitary way of life intrigued Mrs. Turner, who had another conversation with her about it. Why, at your age, do you live like a true recluse? The old lady worriedly exclaimed. Yes, I've always disliked loud places since I was a kid, Zoe explained. Furthermore, not everyone understands and accepts the fact that I work as a regular cleaner. I once met a man. He was attractive. He worked as a manager. But as soon as he discovered where I worked, he lost interest in me. So, why don't you change jobs? The old lady continued to question. You know, Mrs. Turner, it's not easy to find a good job these days. Even those with a higher education, but I merely have a high school graduation with honors. Where can I look for a regular job? And I'm already familiar with the company and Mr. Murphy. And who exactly is Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy is the corporate director where I work. Despite his severe demeanor, I consistently clean prior to his arrival in order to obfuscate my presence. A serious delegation will arrive tomorrow. I've also been ordered to clean earlier than normal. So, Mrs. Turner, good night. I'm going to sleep. I have an early morning meeting tomorrow. The next morning, 
Zoe swiftly finished cleaning the offices and proceeded to take care of the flowers in the lounge. Mr. Murphy came into the room in rage while the young woman was scrubbing a ficus leaf. He was reprimanding his deputy, Nicholas, who had just entered and hadn't noticed that there was another person in the room. Do you understand that I will fire you? Our Turkish colleagues are on their way, and we don't have an interpreter. Mr. Adrian expressly requested that I do so because their interpreter is ill. Is there anything I can delegate to you? I've got us an interpreter, but he's running late. Nicholas attempted to defend himself. That is not my issue. So, what should I do now? Mr. Murphy became outraged and stormed out of the room, slamming the door hard. Nicholas pursued the boss, and a terrified Zoe opted to go to the accounting department and clean there until everything settled down. But when she stepped out into the corridor, she ran into Mr. Murphy and Nicholas again, this time with five Turkish colleagues. Mr. Murphy apologized bemusedly and tried to explain to the guests that the interpreter would arrive soon, but they stared at him puzzled and began to murmur anxiously. Zoe paid attention to what they were saying. She walked up to the delegation, leaving the bucket and mopping behind. She greeted them in Turkish, introduced herself, and offered her assistance to Mr. Murphy. By the time the official interpreter arrived, the negotiations had already concluded, and Nicholas came out to greet him and inform him that they no longer required his services. Without even apologizing, the man angrily threatened that he was the only licensed Turkish interpreter in their town. In answer, Nicholas smiled and informed the smug, arrogant person that this was no longer true and that even the cleaner in their company spoke Turkish better than he did. Mr. Murphy truly thanked Zoe for such a magnificent rescue after accompanying the visitors to the car and agreeing to continue the discussion in the restaurant, and then he told her that she would have to accompany him to the restaurant. He offered to take her home and change her clothing, but Zoe, blushing, stated she didn't have the suitable attire for such an occasion. Mr. Murphy returned to his senses at that moment, frowning and carefully looking at the woman. That never occurred to me. You're a housekeeper, aren't you? I'm not sure what you mean. A cleaning lady, and, all of a sudden, Turkish. And your face appears to be recognizable to me. We'd never met each other before. What country are you from? And your name is quite unique. Mr. Murphy summoned Zoe into his office after noticing her perplexed expression. He insisted on her telling him everything about herself. I spent my entire youth in a little village, but I moved away a few years ago and now live here. My mother passed away. She gave me this name. Mr. Murphy groaned and lamented, my wife died before she could bear me a child. You know, in the end, I blame myself for not having a child. I once abandoned my own son. I had him. Then I went looking for him, but it was futile. Bella, his mother, and I were not married, but I adored her. We split up because of a silly squabble. I didn't apologize because she was envious of me. Bella intended to have a boy and promised to name him after my father because she found her lack of trust offensive. I'm not sure why I'm telling you this, but I really want to see my son, Mr. Murphy, lament. Would you like to meet your daughter? In a shaky voice, Zoe inquired. Mr. Murphy gave her an odd look before the girl told him everything. It was then revealed that Bella had given birth to a daughter, whom she named Zoe, rather than a son. Yes, the girl was Mr. Murphy's daughter, and she discovered this on that fateful day, during a squabble with her father, who was, in fact, her stepfather. He told her the complete truth at that point, and as confirmation, he handed her a file containing her mother's documents. There were letters and pictures from her mother's time with Mr. Murphy, among other things. Mr. Murphy paused to listen to the young woman, then wrapped his arms around his head and stopped for a moment, attempting to process what he had heard. After that, he walked over to Zoe and hugged her tightly. And how well do you speak Turkish? Mr. Murphy inquired abruptly. I also speak Spanish and German, and I am currently learning French. 
Languages have always been second nature to me. I have no idea why. You remind me of your granddad. Mr. Murphy was amazed, and he grabbed his daughter even tighter, still unable to believe in his happiness. Several years had gone by during this period. Mr. Murphy's daughter was always close to him, and when she married his business partner and had a boy, Mr. Murphy, with tears in his eyes, hugged the adorable baby and was finally happy.